But I hope. Good evening. My name is Emil Britt. Welcome to Jacksonville. This is my sister Molly. For years, we welcomed visitors to the home our father built. They were always curious about his many horticultural and artistic activities. We had lots to do after Papa died in 1905. We continued to live there, but turned part of the house into a sort of museum. We kept receiving visitors, offering up the same genial Brit hospitality the world had come to expect from our father. Of course, he was a remarkable man, but you know, when our mother passed away when I was nine and Molly was barely six, I can't imagine a more interesting childhood growing up, or a more devoted father to his children. Without mother's help, he looked after not only the two of us, but also our stepbrother, Jacob. And yet he accomplished so much in his life, recording Jacksonville's history and his photography business and introducing many of the agricultural crops which today form the basis of the orchard and wine industries here in the valley. And don't forget the little touches, like that giant sequoia tree he planted by the house on the day you were born. Yeah, a little. He wanted to celebrate Emil's birth with the biggest, most impressive tree on the planet. Why, I bet you can still see that tree from just down the path over there. It's over 200 feet tall now. <laughs> Papa always made sure we had a good education and a proper upbringing. For example, he wasn't what you'd call a religious man, but he and Mother saw to it that we were properly baptized at the Jacksonville Presbyterian Church. Well, that's true. But as the story goes, my big brother here didn't make it easy. For some reason, he was so panic-stricken, he actually tried to duck under a table. Pastor Moses Williams tried to grab Emil by his waistband before he could get away, but all he came up with was Emil's pants. <laughs> Our parents were mortified. <laughs> you do remember everything. I remember a trip I took with Papa when I was 12. He wanted to photograph Crater Lake. It was a long journey with few roads, but he got three photos that were the first ever taken of that magnificent body of water. In one of them, he posed me along the rim of the crater, looking out over the lake, and I was freezing and shivering, and I can't believe that I actually sat still the 20 seconds it took him to make the glass plate exposure. But those photos helped convince Congress to turn it into a national park in 1902. We went to school here in Jacksonville, and all of us were involved in music. Emo and Jacob sang with a singing group on summer evenings, while I learned to play the beautifully carved Steinway piano that Papa had bought for me. Uh -huh. Those years went by all too quickly. Before long I was off to San Francisco and photography school. Papa had taught me a lot but San Francisco was the place to go for the latest information. And then I did come back to Jacksonville and he welcomed me into the photography business. Mm. Well once I was out of school with Emil back in Jacksonville I was busier than ever housekeeping for the four of us and helping Papa with his ever-expanding garden at one point, I decided we needed new carpets and drapes. Mm. Emil and Jacob agreed, and together we <laughs> hatched a plan to come up with the money for the improvements. Independence Day 1884 was right around the corner. We decided to make and sell ice cream. <laughs> well, of course, in those days, making ice cream in the summertime, that was a tall order. So, Emil and Jacob drove a buckboard to the crest of the Siskiyous, and they packed snow in burlap and sawdust. They brought it back to town, where I helped them make the ice cream. We sold it in small butter dishes for 25 cents a piece, and made a small fortune. <laughs> we had enough money for a red Brussels carpet and heavy white lace curtains. We had them shipped via rail from Portland, just in time for Christmas. <laughs> Papa always said that that ice cream venture was entrepreneurial genius. Oh, speaking of snow, Papa was fascinated by the weather. And for years, he issued daily weather reports to the U.S. Army Signal Corps. And later, when they created the Weather Service, he turned over his daily weather reporting chores to me. Emil faithfully submitted weather observations for 58 years, and he never missed a single day. But that's not my brother's only noteworthy achievement. In 1908, he ran for a seat on the Jacksonville Board of Trustees on a platform of building a dam over Jackson Creek to store water. 
he was elected, and soon the Jacksonville Reservoir was a reality. For 25 years, I served on the board, six as mayor. Meanwhile, I managed over 2,000 acres of farmland around the valley by myself since Papa and Jacob had passed away. Molly tended the house and the gardens, and then, of course, there were all those visitors. The years just flew by. When Emil passed in 1950, the Weather Service declared him one of the deans of the Cooperative Observer Service and sent me a medal in his honor. You all know the Oregon Street Bridge, don't you? Just down the hill from here, over Jackson Creek? The city dedicated it as a tribute to Emil's years as mayor. I believe the plaque is probably still there today. Of course, there was no plaque for me when I passed four years later. Oh, I don't mind, because that's the way it was for women in those days, and I found such satisfaction keeping up our beautiful home for Papa and Jacob and Emil, and I took great pride in sharing our family's legacy.